when you do things with good intentions, they really, really, really happen for you. This is unbelievable. One of the most historic moments of the World Cup. Argentina and France played, and this is where Messi won the World Cup. And I was there to close for that ceremony. The hook, which was my voice, was repeated non-stop throughout the whole World Cup ceremonies, the games, anything that was happening in Qatar, the mall, the airport, the subway, the bus station, any venues in Qatar, every time they'd be playing Light the Sky and that was my voice. I've been told all my life that things are not gonna happen for me, I'm not good enough, I'm not talented enough. Despite all of that negativity and all of that, plotting and scheming and all of that that's been happening on the side I managed to jump over all that by the grace of God and by the help and support of the people around me and managed to be a part of history yeah <laughs> I guess I need to take it way back to about four or five years ago I was working with Amin my Moroccan manager and uh, we just just got out of the success of Arabic Dilbar, our first project together, which I sang and produced with Fnayer. And I remember that's when my singing career outside of India kick-started. And we started planning another collaboration, which we did with Reivani called Pepeta, which I also sang and produced. And I remember at that time, he was telling me, like, we need to start manifesting where we want to be in a couple of years. And we both said World Cup. I'm someone who loves to dream big and manifest and usually it does happen for me but we just I don't know that one was like how like how are we even gonna reach that that's all I kept thinking and fast forward four years and I find out that FIFA World Cup is happening in Qatar and I'm like okay wow is this like a sign I feel like it's just getting closer to my part of the world it's like it's like next door so I mean what's gonna happen and I never really tried to pursue anything, but I knew that if the door was open and an opportunity was there, I knew Emin was going to like convert it to something for sure. So one thing led to another. We get the news that anthems are going to be created for the World, World Cup. And then we found out that people like Davido were on board and Azuna was on board and Games was on board. So it started to look like a diverse lineup. And I was like, oh my God, like, what are the chances that I would be considered? And cut to, I'm minding my own business one day and I get a phone call from Emin and he's like, where are you? I'm like, why? And he's like, you need to get on a flight right now and come to Morocco. I have a surprise for you. I reach Morocco that I find out that he's, he's locked a deal with FIFA and to have me sing the main anthem and feature in the music video. That was, th this was as much as he told me. He didn't tell me anything else. So I was like, oh my God, like, am I going to work with someone as iconic as Red One? That's crazy. I couldn't even fathom. But I think at that moment, I was just like, as long as I get into a studio with an iconic producer like Red One, magic is going to happen for sure. So I landed in Casablanca and straight from Casablanca we went to the studio and that's when I met Red One. Oh yeah, 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 she got you. It's all right, go ahead. We'll start first with the English, cool. so we have it. Okay. And then we do that part by itself. Cool. And all, all, honestly, it is more about, it's not about like singing and perfect, right. it's, it's about Yeah, you want to it? Like, you know, like Fergie style, you know, like, yeah. like yeah. attitude. Okay. Just the vibe, you know? Cool. This is probably one of the most important moments of my career. My check everybody. Light the sky, yeah. Light the sky, yeah. Shout if you're with me. Shout if you're with me. Hiya, hiya. Hiya, hiya. I never imagined I would be standing next to a producer like Red One in a studio. 
I knew that was going to catapult me to another level. I knew that I was going to learn so much in that studio. I knew that I'm going to take home with me a memory that I'm sure a lot of singers, a lot of artists would die for. Red One is someone who's worked with people like Lady Gaga, Jennifer Lopez, um, Shakira, like such big icons. So when I was with him in the studio, I'm like, I need to bring my A-game. I need to be, you know, like that good student, listen to instructions, and just absorb like a sponge as, as, much, as, I can, as much as I can. Everybody, everybody, like the sky. I'm not going to lie, I was really nervous the first like 10 minutes. I'm like, oh my God, like he's used to working with like, the creme of the creme, you know, and here I am like, hey, I'm going to sing the anthem with you, you know, but he was so amazing. He was so warm, so welcoming, and he was so encouraging. Like he hyped me up the entire studio session um, and he knew what he wanted. Honestly, when I was behind the mic and I was looking at him and he was telling me like how to sing it, I was just like trying my level best because I really, 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 really wanted this to happen and I really wanted to get out of this as much as I can. How does the, the, the Indian part sound? It sounds amazing. That's exactly how I want it. He was so keen and excited to, to have Hindi lyrics in the song and a Hindi portion, Hindi verse. And um, I was so happy because I knew that this was an opportunity to bring something different to the table um, and to integrate you know, India and my Indian background in terms of Bollywood and, 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 and everything that I bring as an as a artist here. A part, to, to be a part of such a monumental moment and when he was like, please, let's do this in Hindi, I was like, yes, let's do it. I just felt so, I just felt so proud and so excited and I got Badsha to write the lyrics. I really like the song. It's just it has a great energy. Yes, it's yes, yes, yes. Such and like it sticks in your head. So. And it's beautiful. That's like all for in, first time in the history where like Arab girls only doing something. Exactly. Why? You know I mean? So it's like a statement. So yeah. It's I mean, a statement. It's, a, it's an icebreaker. Yeah, exactly. It's so much. It shows the world. Yeah. yeah. And it's like the perfect time to do this. Yes. I wonder how it's all gonna come together because the girls were yet to record their voices too and then it was all supposed to come together. So after like a couple of weeks, I finally heard the track and I was at home and I'm like, this is happening? Like it sounds so grand and so real and is the world about to hear my voice? Like billions of people are gonna hear my voice and some of them don't even know who the hell I am, you know, but they're going to hear it and it's going to be a part of history, a historic moment. It's the World Cup. I just, I can't tell you guys, I had tears in my eyes and that was me at home. Cut two, I get a call and I'm saying, and, and I'm being told that like, you're going to, you're going to record the music video. <laughs> Yeah. Very, I, know, I like Egg that. Egg them 90s. Egg them 90s. Yeah. I just I want you to like make sure with Emma, you make sure when she's shooting it, she shoots the hook step multiple times. Yeah. Uh, with many different in different locations. Uh, because we need that for the edit. I don't want her that when she's in the edit that she gets stuck. Might as well foresee that she could get stuck and fix the problem before the problem happens. Because yeah, you know yeah. I'm also a director now. I know. So, you know. Uh, you put it all, all <laughs> on your Instagram. Uh, yeah. She put it on her Instagram. <laughs> so you know I have a vision too. I brought with me my team. I had uh, my hair and makeup team. I had Rajit, who's my main choreographer. He also came on board with his assistant, Manan. And I wanted um, everyone to be, everyone who's anyways a part of my journey till now, I wanted them to be a part of this huge part of my journey. Like they had to be a part of, part of it some way or another. And us coming to Qatar for the first time, and you know, we were like, we're here. 
Amin was there, Abdul Rafia, my director was there also to foresee everything, to make sure everything is, is, is proper. Basically, in the song, my ad libs, okay, when I say, Chalo, Chalo, let's go, that's me. Yeah, yeah. I don't want anybody else to be lip singing on my ad libs because if it's let's Lindy, go, that's my thing, you know? Yeah. It's Chalo, let's go. This will work very well with, with, my, my community, with my audience, you know what I mean? I've never sung in Hindi. Yeah. This is the first time. So this will make a lot of noise. So in the montage, in the edit, it can't be some other girl's face, she's lip syncing that part in the edit. She's coming ah. across to me very hesitant, very huh? scared. And we like, make okay. like for example, so I started, for example, she said there's 64 dancers with Sadiq, but only 50 can dance. I said, give me all 64. She said, but then how? I said, Amal, you need presence, you need grandness, yeah, yeah, even yeah. if it's like, 50 dancing and 15 jumping? It'll this is for your sense. benefit. It was actually a very special experience mainly because of the core values of the shoot. How am I such a bad bitch? Like, no. how? The music video essentially is empowering female artists from different parts of the world that actually we could say are the face of the Arab world. Manal, who's a famous singer and rapper from Morocco, extremely talented. Uh, Balqis, who's um, from Yemen and is an Emirati singer, also a very, very talented girl. And then you have Rahma, who's from Iraq. So everyone is uh, representing their region. Uh, all beautiful, talented women who've come together. Uh, then you have me, who's, you know, who is you know, essentially representing the Arab world and the North African world, but is also representing South Asian India at the same time. So that was a very unique addition to the whole lineup. And you have a female director, and then you have female referees who featured in the music video because that was signifying the first time that FIFA and the World Cup was including female referees. So everything about the music video was just so stylish, was fun, it was about a celebration, lighting up the sky, dance, music, um, and just a light of positivity. It was really hot though, I, might, I can't even lie, it was like 48 degrees or something. It was so hot, we were melting, but we had a great time over there. Um, the, the background dancers, the juniors, they were hyping us up. No! <laughs> It was a really good experience and I just knew when we were performing next to the stadium, I just knew like, yeah, shit is about to go down. <laughs> I wasn't sure like where our anthem is going to be placed because there were four anthems that came out. Um, there was the first one with Davido, then there was Azunas and Games, Arhabu. Then John Cook did one too, Dreamers, which was also done by um, Red One, which was also a banger. And then there was one that was done for fan festival, Nicki Minaj, Maluma, and Mariam Fares. So I wasn't sure like where was our song, Light the Sky, 
going to be placed in this whole milestone. But God is great. God is great. Because as soon as the games kicked off, everybody, at this point, I'm sitting in Bombay, okay? I've, I've not gone to Qatar yet. I don't know what's happening. I'm just seeing whatever's happening on social media. And this is where I'm sitting at home, and people who are there live in the stadium have started recording the entire vicinity of the stadium. The games have started, and it's Light the Sky, which is playing throughout the whole stadium, and my voice is echoing, and people are recording, and they're like, oh my God, it's Nora, and they're tagging me. And I'm seeing these posts, and I'm like, oh my God, my hands were shivering. Uh, I can't even tell you how it felt. I can never imagine reaching that level of an achievement. It was just so massive. I felt it was bigger than it was bigger than me, you know. And I just kept obsessing and going through everyone's story and going through everyone's hashtag and just seeing like what is going on. And I realized that light the sky and especially the chorus, the hook, which was my voice, was repeated nonstop throughout the whole World Cup ceremonies, the games, anything that was happening in Qatar, any, any specific place like the mall, the airport, the subway, the bus station, any venues in Qatar, every time they'd be playing like this guy and that was my voice. So as till now, I still haven't stepped foot in Qatar, so I haven't had the proper like you know, live experience, but that was my reaction just from seeing it on social media. And still, a lot of people weren't sure what was going on, you know, and I was just so desperate to get to Qatar and experience it myself. So I landed in Qatar um, to start prepping for my FanFest performance. And I'm there with my team. I'm there with Rajit, who choreographed my performance, who also choreographed my dance in Light the Sky music video. So now he's also part of this epic journey. I'm there with my best friend Steven, who's like shooting my content. I'm there with Amin, my Moroccan manager, who made this happen. And I'm there with Abdurafia, my director. A lot of other people from my team were there. We didn't go with the mindset that we're going to go watch a game. I just thought I'm going to come do my show, prep for that, and that's it. Now, I get an offer like, hey, do you want to come watch the show in the VIP box? I'm like, okay, let's go. I've never watched a football game live. And so everybody, everybody in my team was so excited. So we went and I knew, I was like, guys, like I saw all the social media posts, everything on Instagram that my anthem, my voice is going to be playing in the stadium. I need to experience this live. I just need to. The ceremony started, the intro started, it was so beautiful. We were all like, all our phones were up, we were watching everything. I don't think, I didn't have my phone up. I was just like engrossed in this whole experience. I was just like watching and trying to live the, the moment, you know. And then suddenly, light the sky plays, and it's my voice. <laughs> just so overwhelmed with a gazillion emotions I was freaking out I was happy I was excited I was in disbelief I was feeling so proud of myself also like thinking like oh my god I've just come so far like I cannot believe that this is a moment I could never imagine a girl like me from wherever wherever I came from like Literally, my anthem should be started from the bottom now we're here because that is how I was feeling the moment I heard my voice. Just going back and thinking about how I even found out that I was going to do the FIFA Fan Fest because it was never in the cards. Uh, I just thought I was going to sing the anthem, shoot the music video, and that's it. It was after the music video released, then my manager Amin told me that, look, I have a surprise for you. Um, you're going to be a part of the FIFA Fan Fest lineup. And I wasn't really sure what that meant. Then I, then I understood that FIFA Fan Fest lineup means that every day this is to celebrate the World Cup and to entertain the fans and the audience that are there in Qatar for this event. Every day there will be an, an artist from wherever, uh, from a different part of the world, and that artist will be the, the show of the night. Okay, like that will be the highlight of the night. 
So he's like, so one of the days is going to be you. So I was like, um, okay, fine. I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? It's going to be an, a proper one hour show, which you need to do on your own and hold the entire audience. And nobody from Bollywood or South Asia or India is going to be, um, you know, tapping into this, this territory. This is all yours. So you need to bring, you know, your A game. So went to Rajat and I was like, Rajat, like this is it. I want those crystal castles, but I don't want them long. I want them like sort of this and hot. Enough when they move, you see something, but it's not like, eh, you know, very clean. So this crystal uh, skirt. Correct. It's actually like a tassel. tassel. Drops. Drops, yeah. So we we'll have it on from right at the beginning. Right. By the That's time okay. Saki is finished, we remove it. Correct. So the suit is your, your canvas. Base, yeah. You add the jacket right. for the afro. You add the belts for the Arabic zone. You add the skirt for the Indian, Indian. zone. You know? I knew that the stage was going to be massive and the technical aspect of it was just gonna be so grand and I wanted to make sure that we show up okay and everybody should be talking about us so we prepared this one hour act I made sure that I had all my songs all my Bollywood songs all my international tracks that I sing I just wanted it to be a grand show and I was very very adamant that I was gonna take my dancers from India I did have a difficult time convincing them because they wanted me to take dancers locally from Doha, from Qatar, but I was, I was very adamant that my dancers are going to be straight from India and they're going to be, they're going to shine. I want them to look a specific way, dress a specific way. They're going to have, they're, they're going to look fly on stage. And I just, I envisioned that we're going to come and we're going to make a statement and we're going to leave. For the performance, hmm. the cat suit, it's totally working. Hmm. Now we have to figure out what layers are we doing. I think this will look really good. Yeah. Can you show that? That's very pretty. We are more or less okay. good with the with the with the body suit. We were discussing whether we should uh, the cat suit. Whether we should keep one lining or should we should keep two because of the wrinkles i hope you're getting full gera and i don't know like it's clip i don't know we're trying to keep it as traditional as possible for this for this act for this season uh so this is one this is another option okay so i think i'm gonna get two options this is full traditional long nahi hoga short hoga It'll be your length. Sorry? You mean long? You, you mean it shouldn't be long? You mean I shouldn't step on it. You know how these lehengas, like, they, they get so long and then you just step on them? Wo length we'll, fig we, we'll, we'll, we'll sort out. That's not a problem. Okay. But see the, see, okay. see the color. Ah, oh, nice, nice. Haan, I'm okay hai. with anything. As long as it, when you turn, you give you that massive dramatic spin. Then I'm good. Okay, so then do you want uh, do you want um, uh, slit or no slit? Okay, probably. I know. Don't give me a slit. Okay. Take care. Okay. Cool. Bye. First of all, I mean the rehearsals and then trying to get the costumes right, and you know um, there was a lot of back and forth, a lot of trial and errors. Um, but me, the dancers, Rajat, his team, Manan, Ravina, everybody was super excited. So I reached Doha and I reached before the dancers. I wanted to go with the dancers together, but Due to some situation, I was not able to travel with them, so, but I prepared them. I made sure that they were wearing all the same uniform, red, with my name on it, FIFA World Cup, all of them, you know, reaching the airport in style, um, and I wanted them to make some noise. <laughs> Resting, resting, 
Are you guys? Get away for it. Grab it for the evening. Yeah, sorry, yeah, the conditions are a little bit tough. That's fine, that's fine. But you have to be a little bit patient. Do you guys need something? Yeah, we need Do you want anything? Okay. All good? All good. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. One person is unaware. He's, he's <laughs> somewhere else. Oh my god, we had a. He's okay, getting ready to lift you up. Feeling bad. He's getting ready to lift you up. Oh, he's the one. Yeah. He's like, oh my god. <laughs> Fingers crossed for this very big, big, biggest actually event in our life, in my life and in Nora's life as well. Um, we are pretty excited for this show. This is FIFA World Cup 2022 and I have choreographed her show. Uh, we put up a one hour act. Oh, this is too much of Adeline and Resh. Right now in my plan, I think right now the dancers are getting ready over there. Uh, I think we are all set. The stage is set. The audience have no idea what they're gonna, what they're gonna see, what they're gonna witness. Is this epic performance by Nora Fandey and my team? It's gonna be banger. I'm in stress. Yeah, very stressed. Alhamdulillah, everything is okay with the whole team. With your help and the whole team, dancers and Mehdi and Abdul Rafi, Rajat, everything is okay, alhamdulillah. It was the night of the show and uh, I started getting really nervous and panicking. I've never performed in Qatar before. I've never performed in Doha before. I don't know what my fans are like there. I don't know what the turnout is going to be. So I remember sending Anup and Stephen, I'm like, guys, go, go, see the, see the audience, see how, how it is. What's the number? What's the turnout? They come back and they show me like a video and I was like, oh my God, I've never performed for a crowd this big, never. And then I started panicking more. <laughs> then I started really getting anxiety and anxious and I think even my dancers started getting really anxious. One, two, three. I was feeling myself once I put the outfit on. Falgany and Shane made an, a beautiful one piece for me, a, a bodysuit with this really long pink trail. And suddenly I got into my diva mode, you know, and boom, we're on stage. Ah, come on! I don't know how on earth I did that whole one hour performance, but it was, it was magical. It was everything I had, I had imagined, I, everything I've worked for. I've always wanted to be, you know, center stage, taking control of a huge crowd, um, but I never imagined it would be 70,000 plus people in the crowd. That was. That was a record-breaking crowd churn up for FIFA Fan Fest, um, and that was me, you know, little old me, who came and showed up. And a lot of South Asians came in the audience, and they were really supportive, and they were showing so much love. We had a moment where, you know, um, I held the flag up, and they were so, so they felt so sentimental about that moment, and you know, shouting Jay Hind on stage and having 70,000 people say Jay Hind also. It was like this, this crazy moment. I cannot tell you guys how it felt. It was pure, pure magic. Can I hear Jay Hind? <laughs> it's moments like this that cannot be repeated. And I was so grateful to have that moment on stage, center stage, my music playing, I'm singing the anthem, I'm singing all my other songs. We're dancing to, to Saki, Dilber, all the iconic hits songs that made me who I am today and seeing everybody in the audience you know singing with you doing the moves there were like dance ciphers happening in the middle of the audience kids in the audience dancing we had a hashtag dance with Nora moment on stage we brought these fans on stage cute girls who are from um, you know local from 
from Qatar and who are from Dubai came, they joined me on stage, they danced, and for me, hashtag dance with Nora moments are one of the most important moments of my stage uh, performances. Um, everything amazing happened that night. I must tell you, my performances, they don't have a break. They don't, and every song is high octane, energetic, and it's full energy from the beginning to the end. Uh, but we made it happen. Even with a lot of screw-ups, we made it happen. The minute I started my performance, um, my, my outfit ripped <laughs> in between. Um, nobody noticed, thankfully. I kept going on. The performance didn't stop. <laughs> And then in the middle of Saki, I realized my shoe ripped, also it broke. Are my winners ready? Yay! Where are my winners at? Yeah. Oh my god, you guys are going to be amazing! And I had to like take off the shoe and put on another shoe in the middle of the whole performance happening. Yalla, 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 yalla. Give me the fucking ball, man. Let's be one second. I know the hairstyle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chalo, no stress, no stress. All is fine. All is fine, let's go. I, I mean, these are things that can really freak out an artist on stage, but I just. I just kept it going because the energy was too lit, the energy was crazy, and I don't know when I'm going to have another opportunity like this, you know, but it was so amazing. <laughs> Not many people have that kind of stage presence and that kind of ability, and I tapped into it early on in my career, and I knew that that's something that I can say is my forte, and I never miss an opportunity to connect my audience, my fans, and get them moving also. And I always say in the beginning that, guys, we're here to dance, so you guys are going to dance today. And Kamaria is, I think, one of my easiest hook steps. <laughs> where I feel like, see it's a hit or miss, <laughs> okay, there's 70,000 people in the audience, either like six people are going to do it or everyone's going to do it and you'll know because you can see everyone's hands moving and it's just, you just have to connect with them, you know, you have to make them feel involved and it's an energy that you exchange with them and they know when it's real and genuine and thankfully every time when, I, when I've done those audience interactions, they just work out well for me and everyone who came that night in the audience they came to have fun, they came to celebrate, and they came to um, support me too, you know, and the way they screamed my name, the way they would scream the, the lyrics of the songs, and when I do tell them, like, let's do the Kamaria step, everyone's hands were up, and they were all up for it, they were such sports, and these are the kind of moments, you know, we artists cherish forever. The fact that I have a diverse fan base or a diverse audience, or I can attract an audience from different parts of the world. I think that's what makes me different from everyone else and that's what makes me unique. Um, and I don't take that for granted. I'm always mindful that anything I do in my performances, in my work, I represent everybody in some way. So when I was on stage, a lot of the things happened very on the spot. So even like holding the Indian flag and, you know, chanting with everyone, Jay Hind, that was very on the spot. It was never planned. It was just a moment. It was just a feeling. You know, I, 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 I think that was my way of saying thank you, being so humble and so grateful. And when I saw one of the fans holding the flag and he's like, Nora, please hold it, hold it, hold it. I knew what it meant to him, you know, it meant everything to him and that meant to me everything too, so I wanted to be a part of that moment. Um, and even, even the moment where um, I, I look, I look on the other side of the audience and I can see Moroccans holding the Moroccan flag and I knew what it meant to them for me to be there during the FIFA World Cup and for our Moroccan team to be playing, it is a historic historic moment for all of us and I wanted to encourage that and support them so even 
during our Arabic Dilber, I had, you know, held the Moroccan flag. And even by the end of the performance, we did this fun moment where we were chanting, um, you know, slogans to encourage the Moroccan team, which were like very fun, very spontaneous. And that also went viral, you know, in Morocco and other parts of North Africa uh, because of the spontaneous vibe of it all. Um, but also seeing people from different parts of the Middle East in the audience, you know, also supporting me and singing the lyrics, I just realized that this is, this is a moment where we don't even think about borders, we don't even think about culture differences, religion differences, language differences, we all unite as one under the umbrella of music and dance and I am there propelling that, facilitating that. So I, I, it is just crazy. Like if you were in my situation, you would not even have words to explain what that feels like because I never knew I could actually be in a position where I can say I'm the ambassador of such a thing, you know, like you got South Asians in the audience, you got the Arabs, the Moroccans, they're all here, they all know who you are, you know and they all appreciate you, it's very hard to reach a point like that. And I, I keep saying this, I don't take it for granted. And I remember coming back from FIFA Fan Fest thinking, man, I am so lucky and so grateful. And I think we learned so much from that opportunity, from that moment. And even my team learned so much and we realized that so many stars die for these, this kind of validation and this kind of success. And, only, only a few actually get to experience that. First of all, it was two seconds. <laughs> It was literally two seconds, the wind blew, it hit the flag, the flag went a little bit upside down for two seconds, and then we, I corrected it. When we finished the performance, and the next day when I went back to India, and all that backlash about the flag, and people like ran with that, and they were so excited about trolling me and attacking me about that, I, I felt really broken. I really felt broken. So like, I'm on that stage, I took the mic, I'm, I'm saying Qatar, you know, and I'm getting all that hype, that energy back. And I'm walking across the stage and I see this, the fan and then I'm like, oh, he's holding the Indian flag and he's, and I can genuinely see how happy. Yeah, I saw that was right in front of him. He was like, they were, that's what I mean, they were chanting, they felt so proud. Exactly, and so excited and I'm like, okay, like, I, I'm just like, yeah, like, why not hold the Indian hmm. flag on such a big of stage course, and let yeah, the world yeah. see, you know, and with pride because I'm so like everyone asks me stupid questions like are you like are you, are you Moroccan are you Canadian are you Indian who do you choose who do you mm -hmm. and I'm just like it's, it's not even about that yeah. like I'm not Nora Fatih from Westview Centennial mm -hmm. Secondary School mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. neither am I Nora Fatih who goes to Morocco every summer with her family yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Nora Fatih and like that's a new person mm -hmm. that person was born in India yeah. right? and that person was created in India so it's so hard for anyone to be like to dis disassociate me yeah, with course, the country yeah. yeah maybe I don't have the passport maybe I wasn't born there maybe whatever but like they, people don't understand that but there's also something so admirable about the fact that you took a moment to give due to the country that gave you your your that birth yeah because it's, it is literally it's bringing everything together. Every, like, yeah, full, yeah, I am sure. there today because of this mm -hmm. country and th these people. So that was my okay. intent, you know, and, and I did feel really happy holding that flag on that stage. Of and like, I felt happy even though like I just felt like I felt seen, mm -hmm. like my country mm -hmm. was seen, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the fact that they didn't highlight the intention, they didn't highlight the moment, the success of the event, the turn up of the event and the achievement something that I did that night was never done by anybody else and may not be done by anybody else from our, our industry, again, um, was very disappointing. You know, I'm not even gonna lie. It was really, really disappointing. It was, it was shocking. I, I was very angry. I did not expect 
that at all. I thought that was very, very sad. Um, I do what I do not for, not for the cheerleading of certain people or the cheerleading of certain media heads or publications. I don't do that. I do what I do for my fans and for my audience and to create records, to create milestones, to create breakthroughs in my career and to be the first to do certain things. I always like that tag, the first to do this, the first to do that. I want to break stereotypes. I want to create dreams for people. I want to make my dreams come true. So that for me is why I do what I do. However, that moment where I was like, oh, that's funny. Me singing the, the World Cup anthem and me doing a big project like Light the Sky and now me being the main voice, one of the main voices of the World Cup alongside people like Jungkook and Azuna and Games, such big, big artists. There wasn't a lot of noise about that. But when you knew I was on stage representing an event like FIFA in front of 70,000 people, you didn't make much noise about that. You decided to make noise about a flag that flipped over for two seconds because of the, the wind. That's when I was like... I cried so much. Like, I cried so much. Yeah, of course, because like, after you do so much and all that effort and I achieved something, no, they didn't want to look at the achievement. That they just sounds, wanted to look yeah. at the... something that actually was not even required to be looked yeah, at. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. And I felt like, oh, no matter what I do, it's like, it's never good enough. and it, irks me and it makes me sometimes really really demoralized oh, no, i don't you know? want you to think that no but it was it was a moment like i didn't even like i remember you were calling and stuff i didn't even answer your phone because like i just i couldn't understand i'm like why jump at every opportunity I, it really 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 um dis discourages me like mm. really it does i know like everybody's talking and everyone's going to like the ones that don't want me to like succeed are gonna be having a ball reading this and they're gonna be like, oh look, you know, <laughs> and they're gonna dismiss the whole success of it all and the achievement of it all and it made me, so, I was crying so much. Oh my god, much. I have no idea this is happening. Yeah, like so much. And then you know what, I was like, fuck it man. Then after two days, I was looking at, um, people were sending me responses, Rajit was sending me all the responses, he's like, Nora, look, so many people are backing you up. Yeah, so yeah, many people yeah, are yeah. supporting you. So many people are saying to like the headlines, of course. the blogs, yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. you, what's wrong with you? Like, For why sure. you even? You yeah. Know? So then I realized that, oh my God, like there's so many supporters. For sure. So I, I'm not going to lie. I was very, very disappointed. And to be honest with you, it shed a very negative light to our media by people from outside because a lot of people from outside were asking me, why, why, why? Like, why was the big thing not celebrated as much as it should have been and the small moment overhyped unnecessarily so you know it is what it is we can call it um you know propaganda we can call it sabotage we can call it whatever you want to call it but i did feel that moment for me i felt was really really wrong and i was i they did me wrong they really did me wrong on that one but i really really do appreciate the people that stood by me and in the comment section, 95% of people were backing me up, who were smart, logical, and who put their foot down and took a stance and really supported me in that situation. And I really, really, really am thankful for the people who did that. Thank you so much. And I just, just want you to share this audio with Nora. Thank you for making us so damn proud. Thank you, thank you, thanks a ton to, to, to you know, to come to Qatar, to, to lit this, lit this event with so, so, so much, so much of energy and it felt so good. We feel really proud, really proud that you choose Bollywood and, and you chose Bollywood and you made us all feel that yes, we are the world, we are India. I, I am damn sure the entire, entire nation is proud of Nora and Steven, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being such an amazing performance. Thank you so, so, so much to share this with Nora. I mean, thank you. Thank you, Steve Kankara, for that. I feel like that was the biggest, like, that, that, like, made your mission successful. That was mission complete. Do you know what I mean? I think that's more important than 
three, four people who you know, are trying to change the narrative and sabotage the success story. And if I can have the audience and the fans stick by me no matter what, I think that's more important than anything else. But yeah, I, I was really, really, really upset. I was so sad. I was not really feeling good about myself. And I remember going to this, this party um, and like, you know, some people from the industry were there, some Bollywood people were there. And one of the actors was, instead of that actor saying to me, hey, like, oh my God, what a big achievement you did. I saw this, it was amazing. Like the crowd turned out, you were so crazy on stage. How did you do this? It's such a big thing. That person chose to speak about the flag controversy. And I just looked at that person. I thought, oh, is that all, is that all we did? Do you think that's all we did? And it was really like snappy because at this point I felt so undermined and so it was, I was just feeling so insulted, you know, like, this is me venting to you guys, you know, no filter. I was feeling so insulted. So I remember, and I said to that person, oh, is that, is that all you took from that? No, 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 I mean, yeah, you did like, it was so great, you did this, you did that, like amazing for you, it's so great. Like, I said, yeah, I, it's, a, it's a big achievement. Had it been you, I would have been congratulating you. So I felt, I felt this, this fire inside me, I was just so angry. I remember going home and I called my manager and I'm like, can you believe this? Da, 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 da. And he's like, listen, I have some good news for you. And I was like, what? He's like, because of the noise you're making and because of the way you delivered on stage and the, the way your anthem is exploding, the FIFA president and everyone involved with the World Cup and Qatar want you to perform at the closing ceremony. And uh, you're gonna have your moment alone in the middle of the field. And that's when I was like, oh my god. That's Nora, a big star international. Big, big star. Let's uh, tomber 50 million followers. 1 milliard. C'est la première femme marocaine, africaine, à faire 1 milliard de vues sur YouTube sur une seule vidéo. Nora. So sweet. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Games. This is unbelievable. Now, everything else was background noise. Everything else was background noise. All the mocking, all the humiliation, and me, them trying to sabotage me didn't mean anything anymore. Because I'm like, I'm going to be a part of history. To sing the anthem at the closing ceremony, which now I know is one of the most historic moments of the World Cup. Argentina and France played, and this is where Messi won the World Cup. And I was there to close for that ceremony. Just me, my mic, and my dancers, and I sang the anthem. It was incredible, incredible. Now, everybody else who tried to bring me down didn't mean anything to me in that moment, and all I did was I directed my energies into prepping for that. And the day I reached Qatar, I just wanted to prove a point, that I'm going to kill this moment. Let's do this. It's a rehearsal, and I'm like nervous, why? Because it's like all real, it's all happening. It is. So but I think happening. maybe once you're there, it'll make you feel better. Get the billion thing out of your head, just think about you're performing for a camera. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? okay, yeah, yeah. Good advice, yeah. I'm performing for a camera, not for one billion. And you know how you are when it comes to camera, like the mood, the, the, the face, that stuff, and all yeah. that stuff. Play, 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 right? Play, yeah. How are you feeling right now? You are about to go to a rehearsal for the World Cup I'm closing just ceremony. About how, what are the kind of postures that I need to hold, what kind of movements I need to do to be a dynamic presence you know, mm. for the show. What's going to differentiate me between me and the other people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, bye! Bye! You got it, you'll figure it out. You always do. It was all so overwhelming. Everything was just too big for me. Like, the, the field was huge, the planning, the fact that there are, are other artists there with me, you know, Everyone who's just big in their own right was there. Um, just the, the countdown of certain things, like the timings, when you're supposed to get on the field, get off the field. Guys, I'm sweating so much just from like, my nerves. I'm so nervous. Wait. Um, having that earpiece within you know, your ears because it's really loud in the stadium. So just to make sure that you're, 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 you're moving with the track on beat, you know, second to second. And the, like, it was just crazy. Look who we are. We are the dreamers. This is your zone, just like remember and you'll get it. This, this is your shit. Beyond my zone. This is what you were born for. I still don't know if this is actually happening. But when it actually happened, 
I was like, man, no dream is too big. You're stunning. You will blast the stage. You will blast make everybody the stage. mad about <laughs> the, your performance. Like said, I love you so much. Thank you. Okay, I'll try my best. I can tell that you're nervous. I can I can feel your energy since I'm sitting here, but you don't need to be nervous at all. At all. You performed last time in front of 40,000 people and they this all came just, but plus. they just came all for you last time, you know? So you know how it is, you know what I mean? So you don't need to be nervous at all. Getting ready, there was all that hustle bustle. Everybody's starting to panic, trying to get the hair right, the makeup right, the outfit right. I know my manager started noticing that, you know, I'm going into a panic state. Gims came into the trailer and he wished me luck. He's like, don't worry, you're going to kill it. That was so sweet of him. I'm nervous. Mm, I'm to say yes. I'm You're not stressed? No stress. Never. Jamais. Never. I don't know why. This time I'm so oh, stressed. Dear. I don't get it. Women, women, you know about the costumes, yeah. the outfits, the hair. There is no need to get nervous. You are amazing. You know the dance. You know the song. You're born you for this. Gonna, you're born for the this. Country. It was. It was a mix emotion of like, there's a lot of emotions. There's excitement. Anxiety, happiness, it's just, it was crazy. I think what really made me sad though was the fact that I had to leave everybody behind and go to the stadium alone. And I didn't want to go alone, but that was the protocol. We couldn't take everybody with us. You're born for this moment. You got this. It's happening. It's happening. We love you. You got this. Went backstage, was with the crew, the girls, uh, Azuna, Games, and. Um, all I could be thinking, all I was thinking is that Nora, don't fall when you enter the field. Don't fall. So I was practicing my steps, practicing like how I'm going to hold the mic, where I'm going to look at the camera, doing all that. And, you know, trying to get my lipstick right, you know. <laughs> all this was happening and my crew was back in the trailer and they were waiting for me, watching the big screen, waiting for that moment. I don't know what all the, how was happening in the trailer with them, but I can tell you backstage, like I told you guys, I was standing alone and I was soaking up the whole experience in and I was just saying thank you God and I was, I was just being grateful for that moment knowing that it could have been anybody else but it's me so I have to really deliver. Four years ago we dreamed of FIFA World Cup. We didn't know exactly what would happen. Would we be there to sing, perform? Something we knew was going to happen because we, we put it out there in the universe. It's going to go down in history. Yeah. Did you ever imagine this day? I never. Nora Fateh. Never. Me. This big bird. You performing in Paris. I, if you told me I was going to perform somewhere like this, I would have laughed. Like last year, if you would have just told me, yeah. we're going to do a performance in Olympia, I would be like, nah, <laughs> that's not possible. Oh, uh, now it's possible. So, and this is just the beginning, huh? <laughs> and God is great because when you do things with good intentions, they really, really, really happen for you. And my hard work, my, my resilience, I never stopped hustling. I knew I was going to get what I wanted. I'm just like, I'm a girl from Canada. I'm from Toronto. I'm from Jane and Finch. If anyone knows about Jane and Finch, you know. It's the most, it's not even close to this, this, this world that we're talking about. And I'm someone who has no backing, no connection to this stuff at all. And all I heard all my life is no, 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 no. I never heard yes. All my life there's just no's, no's, no's. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. And I came to this part of the world and I always said that it's not just going to be India and Bollywood, but I'm going to make it more than just India and Bollywood. I'm going to take India and Bollywood with me. I'm going to hold it tight. I'm going to nurture it and it's going to give me more. And it's going to always, I'm always going to combine everything together. So to be standing on the sidelines of that stadium and knowing that billions of people are tuning in right now, to watch the closing ceremony. Some people know me and some people don't. And that's beautiful. How many, how many people can say, I performed at the World Cup? How many people? Not much, not many, <laughs> not many. And only icons have done it in the past. Not saying that we're iconic or anything, but the moment is iconic. And I think that's what makes this all the more, all the more special. 
on that field when I just stepped in and started singing Light the Sky, I just blacked out. <laughs> I don't even remember how to do it. By the time it was done and I stepped out of the stage, I was shaking. Really, I was shaking. Oh my God, we did it! We did it! It happened! I can't believe it! And in that moment, I thought, I don't care who's going to celebrate this, what media is going to say or not say about it, who in which party is going to congratulate me or not, because I don't need that validation. I am already grateful enough to just have this opportunity because I know very few will get it. I kept telling them, I want to go back to my team, I want to go back to my team, and the minute they put me back on the buggy and, and I drove back to the trailer, I could see Emin running to the buggy, he's like, you did it, you did it! And he, he had like tears in his eyes because guys, you, you have no idea, we've been working for years for this moment, you know, years, and it happened. And I did it, and he came running, and he, he had tears in his eyes, he's like, we did it, we did it. And I, I was just like, I can't believe it happened. And, and we drove the buggy to the, to the trailer, and Steven, Anoop, you know, my hair and makeup people were there, Mariana, Ahmed, Asta, everybody was there. And everybody had tears in their eyes. Oh, yeah. You did it! You did it! You did it! You did it! We did it! It was it? It was crazy. It was incredible. It was the best entry. Yeah, beautiful. The best was so good. Yeah. Best entry. Best entry. Swear to God, it was the best entry. Dude, I'm so happy. I can't believe this. We're so happy. You, you did so great. I'm not yeah. even joking. You were the best what, one. How did you feel? I don't know. I don't remember it. Yeah, it happened yeah, yeah, so fast. You know, yeah. but. I was like, I, I, I could never imagine myself doing something like that. It was so, Nora, it was like fucking, it was so unbelievable. Was, We're gonna was, watch it. Yeah, you, you came on so cool, you know, like, bam, bam, it was so good, your entry was so good. I everybody was, was so good. Everybody was Shufius, there, Shufius. and then you came And in. you came, yeah, Money. yeah. <laughs> And I saw your fucking expressions, bitch. Right? Was I? No way. Yeah, in the beginning. You know you what? I was serve. kidding. I'm like, this is this is my only chance. You got it. You did it. You did what you I had to do. To you did it. Do it. You know. Oh, I'm so happy. It went. It went perfect. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, it went perfect. It went perfect. Everything was perfect. Yeah, Nora, we did it. I'm we so grateful. We did it. Yeah, I'm so like. God so brought you here for a reason. Like this is your journey. It all happened for this day. We did it. Thank you guys for so being good. here. It was so, so fucking good. good. You have I can't no explain like how much this means to me. I'm still in disbelief. I can't believe what happened today. It's so surreal. I'm so grateful. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. It's been a crazy World Cup this year. Um, 2022 comes with a lot of surprise packages. Um, the kind of teams that came through, the underdogs that made an impact, the Moroccan team creating history, reaching the semifinals. And my contribution as a Moroccan, Canadian-born, Indian artist, being a part of this, bringing art and bringing dance and music, you know, not being a native Hindi speaker, but singing the World Cup anthem in English and Hindi is a next level representation. Creating the idea of a global citizen, a global artist of all, always possible, coming here, singing, performing, bringing people together from all different parts of the world, celebrating, creating positivity, and also sending an indirect message to the world that you need to dream and you need to dream big. I think the anthem Dreamers, which is one of the World Cup anthems, 
kind of embodies the whole journey of this World Cup for me because I only dreamt it and I made it happen because I believed it. So I think my message for the youngsters out there who follow me and who've seen this journey and who aspire to be like me or even anybody who I inspire out there, I think the message is very clear. Believe in yourself. You have to have unconditional self-belief that no matter what comes your way, no matter what they hit you with, it cannot shake you up one bit. You need to have immense self-belief, confidence, and you need to be ready to, to grab any opportunity. So work on yourself, work on your passions. If you have any talent and skill, work on that and wait until that opportunity comes because when it comes, you need to be ready. And I think that's what has helped me till now. Keep the people you love and the people that love you around you. Keep positive people around you. And don't let the background noise get to you. Because if I would have let the background noise get to me, I don't think I would be here today. And always be grateful. When you're grateful and you have good intentions and a pure heart, trust me, nothing will get in your way. I've been told all my life that things are not going to happen for me. I'm not good enough, not talented enough. Um, well, you know, not for you. Well, th th that's too big. Are you dreaming big? Oh, you're aiming for too far. I've been told this all my life. And I've been constantly battling, sabotaging, battling blockage, battling people who are trying to like ruin things for me, destroy moments for me, and just remove me from the equation. That's all I've been battling for, for a long time. And despite all of that negativity and all of that um, plotting and scheming and all of that that's been happening on the side, I managed to jump over all that by the grace of God and by the help and support of the people around me and manage to be a part of history. Yeah. <laughs>